In this video, I'm going to cover orientation tolerances. So there's three orientation tolerances, parallelism, perpendicularity, and angularity. They all control angular relationships. So there's three really important things that they all have in common. The first is that they require datum references. And this is logical. It's not something you need to memorize, right? If you're going to measure how parallel a tabletop is to the floor, right? The floor is your datum. You have to have somewhere to measure from. Think about a flagpole. If you want to know how perpendicular a flagpole is, you have to reference it to something. Normally, that will be the ground, right? So all orientation tolerances require a datum reference. It's just a place to measure from. Now, the next thing is that orientation tolerances do not control the location of features. Now, this is a little bit more difficult, but think about it this way. So you're going to go measure your tabletop to see if it's parallel to the floor. So you grab a tape measure, you measure a couple points on the top of the table, and you find out the top of the table is you know, 30 inches, 30 and 1 eighth, you know, uh, 29 and 7 eighths. So the top of the table, you could say, is parallel within 1 quarter inch. That's the difference between your highest measurement and your lowest measurement. Now, if you measured another table that was taller and you got, you know, uh, 50 inches and 1 eighth, 50 inches and then 49 and 7 eighths, right? the parallelism is still one quarter inch. Thus, the location, the distance from the top of the table to the floor doesn't matter when you're considering parallelism. So all of the orientation tolerances work within some other tolerance. A lot of times it's going to be the limits of size, so you're going to have a plus or minus dimension controlling the location, and then an orientation tolerance refining that location. So think about the example with the table, right? Your, kit, your uh, dining room table, nobody's really going to care if it's a half inch taller than somebody else's or a half inch shorter than somebody else's table. But you are going to care if within that half inch, you know, it's, it's angled, right? So every time you put a, a Sharpie on there, it's going to roll off. You don't want that. So the, the location of the top of the table matters less than the parallelism, right? So the, I'll show you on the board in a second. The parallelism just refines the plus or minus dimension and makes things, you know, cheaper to make. The last thing with orientation tolerances, as far as what they all have in common, is that they can apply to surfaces or features of size. Now, luckily, on the drawing, it is very, very similar to how form tolerances are applied. So if you see uh, orientation tolerance applied with a leader directed to a surface or an extension line or the feature control frame attached to an extension line, it applies to a surface. If the feature control frame is attached to a dimension with the plus or minus tolerance, then it applies to a feature of size. So they can apply to either an axis or a center plane. So let's dive right in to parallelism applied to a surface, and then I'll do perpendicularity applied to a surface, and then we'll talk about, you know, application to features of size. So parallelism applied to a feature of size must be done with either uh, the feature control frame uh, pointed with a leader like shown, or you could have the feature control frame attached to an extension line that goes to that surface. Now, the tolerance zone for this is two parallel planes, the distance apart being this number right here. Those two parallel planes must be parallel to the datum. Okay? So what you got here is you know, a size dimension, two inches, plus or minus 40 thousandths. No matter what, the surface has to be within that. But within that, now you have two parallel planes 20 thousandths apart that can float within that larger tolerance zone. So this 2.04 is our MMC. No matter what, the surface can't go past the MMC. So this 20 thousandths is not additive to the part. 
but the surface can be up here or down here as long as it's between these two parallel planes that are 20 thousandths apart, those two parallel planes being parallel to our datum surface. Now, normally you check this on a surface plate, right? You put the part on the surface plate and you get a height indicator and just run it back and forth. And that will tell you uh, whether it's parallel to the surface plate or not. So this is a really common tolerance out there, a parallelism applied to a surface. What it gets you is a parallel surface to here and you can use a larger size tolerance for, you know, like we were talking about with the kitchen table. Sometimes you don't really care the overall height of something as long as it's parallel to a datum. So usually sometimes that can achieve your you know, design goals. One other thing, if you notice, there's no material condition modifier in here. It can't apply to something that applies to a surface. So uh, rule number one applies, like what I just mentioned. The actual surface of the part can never exceed the MMC and no material condition, no MMC or LMC or RFS can apply to this. Another thing I wanna mention is that if the surface is between these two parallel planes that are 20 thousandths apart, we can also say that the surface is flat to within whatever the parallelism tolerance is, okay? So the check for flatness is very similar. So you never have to put a flatness tolerance unless it's smaller than this, okay? So sometimes you'll see a parallelism with a flatness, but the flatness needs to be smaller or it wouldn't make sense. So parallelism of a surface automatically controls the flatness up to this value, okay? Now, another concept that applies to parallelism is known as tangent plane. So what tangent plane does is just consider the high points of the part for the parallelism. What this effectively does is release the form requirement, the flatness that we just talked about from the parallelism. Let me show you what I mean. So the tangent plane symbol goes right behind the tolerance. And what it's saying is that only the high points need to be considered for the parallelism check. So how this is, can be done is you take a, a precision a block. So if a small part, a gauge block or a sign bar, something you know is very flat, set it on the top of the part and then see if that is parallel to the datum. Okay, so what this allows is you can have more valleys in the part because these points are not being considered for the parallelism. Uh, this tolerance probably isn't used all that often, but as far as function goes, when your part mates up to this, as long as the mating part is nice and flat, it's only gonna touch the high points anyway. So if you have like rough stock, so something in your storeroom has real been pitted by rust or something, it might fail a traditional parallelism check but it might pass the tangent plane uh, check and still be just as functional, okay? So let's move on to perpendicularity applied to a surface. It's very, very similar. So in this case, I've applied the orientation tolerance to the extension line. So what it's telling you is it's this surface being controlled. So we're saying that this surface is perpendicular to the datum, okay? As far as a check on the plate goes, it's about the same, except you typically uh, put this up on a, a, an angle plate and get it vertical so you could check it a little bit easier. Now I won't draw the tolerance zones for the perpendicularity because it's the same as parallelism. What I do want to mention is that you can have more than one datum reference. So if you have two datum references with the perpendicularity, it doesn't control location. It just controls rotation when you go to inspect. So let me show you what I mean. So here's a super common setup for a datum, a datum reference frame. So we've got datum A, B, and C. The primary datum 
And we know it's primary because I've got it in this position as the first datum listed. It's controlled with a flatness tolerance. This is usually used just to make sure the place you're measuring from, the datum, is good, right? You don't want it to be a, you don't want it to be a feature with a bunch of variation on it when you're measuring from it, okay? So we've got the flatness applied to this bottom surface, so this surface right here, and then the datum feature symbol applied to that extension line. Next, we've got datum B, which in this case would be this surface right here, perpendicular to datum A. So when we go to check this, we'll put it probably on, a, probably on an angle plate and then run an indicator across this surface until we get the correct reading, okay? At that point, you can move the part, right, like this to achieve the best reading. Next, datum C is perpendicular to datums A and B. Like I mentioned, this doesn't control location. This just has to do with rotation when you're inspecting it. So what this means is you'll get three points of contact with datum A, you're gonna push it up against something for datum B, and now the part is locked except that it can move up and down, right? Remember how I mentioned uh, these tolerances don't control location. So three points on datum A, push it up against the angle plate, and then you can move it up and down and then run an indicator across it. You can't move it up and down in between measurements though, right? So you move it here, right? You run your indicator. If your indicator reads less than 10 thousandths, you're good to go. If your indicator is bottoming out or something, you can move the part down, start over, and check it again, okay? So that second datum just controls the, lo the rotation as you're inspecting. What all of these do together if you remember, or if I haven't mentioned it yet, a datum reference frame is three mutually perpendicular planes. Now, in theory, it's perfect. In reality, it's not perfect. But what we're trying to do with this is what's known as qualifying the datums. We wanna make sure our datums are perpendicular to each other in such a way that we get repeatable measurements, okay? So let's chat about perpendicularity applied to a feature of size. So in this case, I've got a pin that's pressed into a plate with a perpendicularity applied to it. If you notice, the feature control frame is attached to the dimension. Inside the feature control frame, we've got the diameter symbol that indicates that we have a cylindrical tolerance zone. The axis of that pin should fall within this tolerance zone in reference to datum A. So you can imagine a tolerance zone 20 thousandths in diameter, shooting straight up from datum A. The axis of the actual feature must lie within that tolerance zone. Now, when this is applied to a feature of size, material conditions do apply. So this is applied at RFS, which just means that that tolerance of 20 thousandths applies no matter what size the actual feature comes in at. Now, if we apply it at MMC, we'll get a very different result. Let's take a look. So if we make a chart where we compare the size of the actual feature to the geometric tolerance, we're gonna find out that if the feature departs from MMC toward LMC, so the pin comes in smaller, we get more geometric tolerance equal to that difference. So if the pin comes in at one inch instead of its MMC of 1.02, we get an additional 20 thousandths of perpendicularity tolerance. That means that cylinder that the axis of the feature must fall within now gets bigger. And now the cylinder is a 40 thousandths diameter. If the feature comes in at LMC, we get 60 thousandths of geometric tolerance. It means the pin can be more crooked. If we add the size to the geometric tolerance, we get the virtual condition. So the virtual condition represents the worst case mating envelope. So what it does is takes into account the size and the orientation to see how much room that pin could take up in reference to datum A. So if you get a mating part 
that is set to the virtual condition of this, 1.04 or larger, this, the mating part will fit over the pin and make full contact with datum A. This is really important for design and inspection. So we can check this part with a gauge because we can verify this with a fixed gauge and we can verify the size with the two-point measurement. This saves a lot of money if you can afford it and your tolerance stack up. Now, the downside is that these aren't great for locating features. Now, this is perpendicularity, not position. But as the pen gets smaller, you know, you get more variation in your stack up. Now, what happens if we set the geometric tolerance to zero, right? And we can do this. Check it out. If we set our perpendicularity tolerance to zero, what it means is you have zero perpendicularity if the feature comes in at MMC. It's gotta be perfect. But if the feature comes in small, you get that geometric tolerance back, right? Up to the total size tolerance. So this is plus or minus 20 thousandths. That's the total amount of perpendicularity tolerance you could have if the feature comes in at LMC. You also get a virtual condition with this, which is going to be a little bit smaller, right? So 1.02 for this feature. That would be the diameter, the smallest diameter of a mating part that would fit over the pin and make full contact with datum A. Now, if you had a mating part that was smaller than the virtual condition, okay, say you had a mating part that was, you know, 0.98, it might fit over the pin, but it might not make full contact with the datum, right? You imagine, you know, this pin is crooked and you try to fit something on there, it's gonna touch one portion of this, not the whole thing. The next thing I wanna talk about is the concept of an actual mating envelope. So if you're wondering how do we find out where the axis of this feature actually is, the way we do it is with the actual mating envelope. So the actual mating envelope is a similar, perfect, feature counterpart of smallest size that can be contracted uh, onto an external feature or of largest size that can be expanded on an internal feature. Now, that sounds really complicated, but it, it's really not. So let me show you on the board. So I've got a pin and then I've got a hole. Okay, they both came in with a lot of variation. If we wanted to know what the actual mating envelope of the pin is, we would collapse a cylinder on it. So think about if you put a drill chuck on this and you're collapsing the drill, drill chuck until it makes maximum contact. You would end up with a cylinder, a cylinder that collapses on that part and the axis of that perfect cylinder becomes the axis of this feature. Right. That would be the axis we would use to figure out if the perpendicularity tolerance is within tolerance. Now, as a practical method, you know, this can be simulated with a collet or a ring gauge or all kinds of things, or even just uh, uh, running an indicator over it. Now, for an internal feature, a hole, this is usually simulated with Gauge, or with gauge pins, right? So you find gauge pins and you put one in and if it fits through, you go to the next size up, see if it fits, and you get the largest gauge pin that will fit in the hole and that's gonna simulate the axis of that actual feature. So the largest gauge pin that would fit in that feature is gonna touch the high points and the axis of that gauge pin is the axis of that feature. That's what we would use to figure out if it's within tolerance for perpendicularity or even things like position, okay? So this is great because it's really functional, right? Because normally we care about the high points, not the average of all the points. Uh, the next thing, this is unrelated actual mating envelope. It's what we use for position and perpendicularity, but there's another concept known as the related actual mating envelope. The difference is the related actual mating envelope is constrained to datums. So let me show you an example.
If we wanted to know the related actual mating envelope of this pin pressed through this plate in relation to datum A, we're gonna collapse the cylinder onto the pin, okay? But that cylinder has to make full contact with datum A as well. So if we just slid a ring gauge over this, right, the axis of the ring gauge would be about right there. But that's not what we're doing. This would be the unrelated actual mating envelope. The related actual mating envelope needs to stay in contact with datum A. So imagine you got a cylinder sitting on datum A and it's collapsing. Eventually, it's gonna touch one point of the pin here and one point of the pin here. Now, that opening is gonna be larger than if you just collapsed it on the pin because now it's taking into account a datum. This is the related actual mating envelope which also is usually the virtual condition, okay? So the, the concepts kind of uh, work together. The next thing I want to chat about is parallelism applied to a feature of size. This is only for axes, and where you'll see it is if you have two cylinders, so something like a connecting rod for an engine, where you have a basic dimension between them, you'll have a position tolerance on one of them, and then a parallelism refining that position tolerance. It's not super common because you can just use a composite position to achieve the exact same thing. Uh, another thing I want to mention, you can use parallelism tolerance with a profile, but a profile tolerance does the same thing as well. Okay, So there's certain areas where you could use an orientation, but a position or a profile essentially does the exact same thing. Okay? So the orientation tolerance we did not talk about is angularity. Angularity is used for uh, angles that are not zero or 90 degrees, but confusingly, you could use angularity in the place of parallelism or perpendicularity. That's a, a newer thing in the ASME standard. The way you know the difference is just looking at the lines on the drawing. So if the lines are drawn as perpendicularity and then it's not stated anywhere that it's not 90 degrees, you assume it's 90 degrees. Same thing with draw lines that are drawn parallel. This is fundamental rule J from the ASME standard. Now, whereas you can use angularity in the place of parallelism and perpendicularity, I wouldn't recommend it because it's going to confuse people, uh, but it's possible. So angularity does the exact same thing as all the stuff I've been talking about. You can use it on a surface or a feature of size. It's not quite as common as the other ones. Uh, for a surface, you'd probably use profile instead. Uh, it would accomplish about the same thing. For a feature of size, it's possible, but again, you'd probably just use position or composite position to achieve the same thing. So that's it for this video. I didn't cover every possible uh, permutation of orientation tolerances, but these are the highlights. This is the stuff you need to know. I hope you found it helpful. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe.